So why did you guys get in the house on the rock business? Why did your family get in that business? My dad owned a billboard company. Alex advertised with our company, and so he developed a friendship with my dad. And as his health was failing, he said, oh, gee, I'm looking to sell the place. And my dad said, gee, I'd really like to buy it. Unbelievable. So when you guys bought it in 88, you said? Yes. Did you guys both work there then? I didn't. No, I've always, you were there. I've always been more in the background. So, and I started working in the fall of 89. I mean, what a big undertaking, buying the house on the rock. I mean, this is a national monument. It's like a Smithsonian. So why have you guys decided to sell some of this stuff? Well, the buildings are starting to fall into disrepair, and some of the items are getting ruined and lost. Like wet or something? Yeah, they're getting wet. And then we'd like people to enjoy some of these. We've got everything on display that we want on display, and it's a shame not to have other people bring these items out for... for so I'm noticing, like, so this barn or this room, this, this is, is all... horse drawn. Yes. There's a car over there. What's that? I believe it's a 48 Lincoln. Lincoln! Oh, that's gangster. When's the last time this ran? <laughs> About 1974. Is it luxury inside or? Oh, yes. It's a Lincoln, man. I know, man. This is one that my father had years ago. Oh, so he's the car collector? Yes. Oh, okay. okay. That's totally dead. He loved antiques. My parents were constantly going to auctions and trade shows. Any of that rub off on you guys? A little bit. You know, no. I, I appreciate <laughs> no. I appreciate it. But I've also seen the other side to it, is yeah. all these items have a maintenance aspect. Or oh a share. Yeah, if you're talking yeah. cars, they do. Darn to, right, yeah. they do. Or, or horse-drawn hearses. Yeah. So <laughs> we have quite a few. Oh, you have more than two hearses? Yes. Alex at one time got a whole collection of hearses and carriages, but we're not really sure when they came and why they came. Mm, Frank, look in here. It's got this original material. Look at the drapes are all original. Small, too, because people were smaller back then. Yes. That's not that small. I don't know. It's like 12 feet long. You double up in there. Yeah, I suppose. You interested, Frank? No, I'm not ready for the hearse yet. <laughs> Obviously, Alex wasn't your usual collector. That's a little too fancy for me. Pretty tacky. Yes, he collected stuff, but he was also looking at things for an exhibit. Well, we might have, what, 40? He, what? Yes. 40 or 50. You have 40 or 50 of these? We have another There's... two barns. When people saw these coming down the road, they were mourning. So to him, there's a reflection of that, but it's also maybe some sort of a celebration of the afterlife, you know, who knows? The guy was very creative. This is a mind bender. Look at this thing. See, this is all wood. The faux paint jobs are incredible. Was he doing the painting and everything too? Well, his crew. So how many people were working for him at one time? Up to about 35. Alex's creations were only limited by his imagination, and he had a team of people helping him. I mean, this looks like something out of Willy Wonka. Yeah. Yeah. It was the perfect scenario for a creative mind. And as you can see how time has taken its toll in the Wisconsin weather. Sure. Yeah. And we're trying to go and save what we can, consolidate it into a smaller building that's easier to maintain okay. and be watertight and 